Well, says I'm live. You be the judge. <laughs> you know, it's always hard to tell. You know, you don't know. I have no idea whether I'm really coming through your computer. <laughs> I just get this little message that says I'm live. <laughs> and then it disappears. I'm Tim Carter. This is Ask the Builder. And it is March 8th, 2022. I had so far today, it's we're going to talk about crown molding in just a little bit. I'm going to wait till we maybe get a few more people on. Uh, <laughs> I've had kind of a salmon day. I, I call them salmon days. You ever um, watched video of salmon trying to swim upstream to spawn, you know, <laughs> you know, jumping through waterfalls? I mean, they, they actually can make it. I, it's crazy. I mean, but they they do all this work. They keep swimming and swimming and, and, and they just don't seem to get anywhere. <laughs> So sometimes I have a what I consider a salmon day. You know, I'm I'm doing all this stuff, and then I look at my to-do list and like nothing got done. <laughs> I had to go get materials today. That's what I call them. My wife thinks I'm nuts. Kathy thinks I'm crazy. Most people call them groceries. I call them materials because you know, you use these things to make stuff, you know, to make to make dinner, make meals. So I, I got materials to build houses. So it's the same thing, you know. Hi, Louise. How you doing? Um, I am just kind of, uh, what's up? I, I don't know. I don't think the stock market's up. I can tell you that. Uh, I'm still kind of basking in yesterday's live stream. We we did a record two hours. I don't know that we'll do that today, but it was um, it was a really great uh, live stream. Uh, hi, Lorraine. How you doing? Um, <laughs> uh I got questions about the, that island, uh, about your photos you sent me. The uh, and soon we're going to have a, a way to share it. Um, the um, I found out about yesterday from a a, a visitor, a viewer uh, about Discord. I, I had no idea about this website that's been out there. It was built for gamers. I did a bunch of research on it this morning. Built for the gaming community, <clears throat> so that they had a place to chat and talk and share things. Uh, while they were playing games on, in another browser. Uh, but then with the Shamdemic, um, it kind of broadened the people who were using this 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 service, this Discord. It looks like it, it's going to work out really well. Uh, I need to practice with it. I need to kind of get up to speed. And then, um, and I think I may send some invites <clears throat> on a limited basis to play with it so I don't look like an idiot while I'm here live streaming. <laughs> Uh, hi, Will. Um, so I pick <clears throat> on Saturday morning when I took my daughter to the airport, I paid three ninety eight a gallon. Um, so um, it, it's got to be more. It's got to be got to be probably over four dollars at an Irving station now. Uh, and it's going to get a lot worse. All right. So I I. Um, you know, um, there was a headline. If, if here's here's what here's all, here's all I want to say before I go into the crown molding, is why <laughs> I'm trying to think how to phrase this. All right, why would all of a sudden you believe what you are seeing out there now? When it's the same, when it's the same people <laughs> in the same places that were trying to sell you the shamdemic, all right. <laughs> and and if you haven't figured this out yet, then we're going to go to crown molding. We're going to go to crown molding in just like thirty seconds. If you have not figured this out yet, um, every <laughs> they. They go from one thing to another to get you all worked up, all right? I, I, I mean, it's you know how you have a calendar of events? <laughs> I'm serious. You have a calendar and you can look forward like three months, six months, what you're going to be doing. I'm telling you right now, they have a flipping calendar, everything already mapped out of what disaster, what tragedy, what illness, whatever is going to be upsetting you 
nine months from now, 18 months from now, 24 months. I'm telling you, it's all mapped out. Okay. All right. Um, all right, Monique, 453 in Florida, uh, 359 this morning in Ann Arbor. That's very interesting, Bob. 389. Wow. Um, I I just um I was in town earlier, but um I should have looked up. I I I pulled into the bank. I could have looked to see what the sign said, but I, I'm just gonna say it's if it's not four dollars, it's daggone close for, for 87 octane. Okay, let's talk about crown molding real quick. If you have any questions about crown molding, now's the time to put it in. I don't know how many linear feet of crown molding I've installed in my life. It could be 5,000, it could be 10,000. It might be 20,000 feet, a lot of crown molding. Um, it's a really interesting molding. And um, <laughs> all right, so I'm going to tell you a funny story. So <laughs> this is pretty rare. I, I, don't, I don't know that I've really told this story in public. <laughs> But it just shows you that I'm a human being, all right? If you hadn't already figured that out. Early in my career, I was I was probably 23 years old. You know, I, I graduated from uh, college when I was 22. And I started my construction business that fall after getting back from my honeymoon with Kathy. We, we toured the Northeast. And um, probably that spring... The spring of 75 could have been the spring of 76, but surely no later than 76. So I was I was still a pup. And somehow I got this job to put up crown molding in this little breakfast area of a house in Marimont in, in Cincinnati. And um, my father-in-law had a had an old-fashioned miter box, a Stanley miter box, pretty accurate. And um, I proceeded to go out there with the four pieces of crown molding, you know, and, and I started taking the measurements by myself and I start cutting it <laughs> and I go to put it up. And I mean, the gaps are like this big. I mean, huge gaps. It's, it's not meeting in the corners. And, and the, the, the one was a mom with, uh, I remember some small kids like toddlers, um, you know, and she was leaving me alone, but she would stick her head in for every now and then. And, and I'm just like dumbfounded. I, I mean, I go out and I try to cut it again. I mean, I'm cutting it in every possible way to hold it in a saw and, and it's not working. <laughs> and um, finally I had come outside one time and to try to cut something. And, and she came outside and she said, she was really sweet. <laughs> She was a little older than I was, all right? So if I'm 24, she would have been like 28, 29. And she said, um, you, you really don't know what you're doing, do you? <laughs> I mean, it, it was like a dagger in the heart, you know? And I, <laughs> I, um, I was honest. I said, I cannot figure out why this is not working. And she said, well, it probably would be a pretty good idea for you to pack up your tools and go away. <laughs> It was the only time I've ever been fired in my life. All right. So, <laughs> so I was so embarrassed. I went down to the, um, I went down to the library. There was no internet back then. Okay. Or if it was, it was just the government using it. It was not available to us. All right. Uh, I go down to the library and I find a book about how to do it. And and here's what it is. In other words, I if you've ever looked at a piece of crown molding, I wish I had a piece up here. I should have grabbed one before I did it. So if you go to the lumber yard or you go to one of the big box stores and you buy crown molding, to you, it's going to look like a regular piece of trim that you would put around a door or a window. In other words, it's got a profile on one face. And when you flip it over, um, it's got a flat back. Now, what it has, though, it has a shoulder and it has a, you know, a heel <laughs> that, that you don't see on other moldings. All right. Well, in the old days, in the old, old days, crown molding was actually a, it was a solid piece of wood. It was a triangle. It had a, it was solid wood. Whereas now when you put a piece of crown molding up in the ceiling, there's a hollow spot behind it. Well, in the old days, Old, old, old-fashioned crown molding, that was all solid wood into the corner. 
I was trying, I was holding the crown molding. I was putting that back. I was putting the, the, either the face of the crown molding or the back of the chrome mounting on the table, or I was putting it on the fence. I tried it every possible way. And no matter which way you put it, it would never cut it right. Because the way you have to put crown molding in a miter box, saw, a miter one, a modern one, is you have to flip it upside down and you have to put that, you have to act like the, Fence and the table are the wall and the ceiling. That's how you have to put it in. And I've got a photograph of on the thumbnail of how to do it. And you can see the uh, picture of how to do it right here. I mean, this is how the crown molding has got to go into the saw. Well, that's not how I was putting it in a saw. All right. So I'm going to put it in a photograph. Go here and you'll see a photograph. This is how the crown molding is supposed to fit into the saw. And when you do that <clears throat> and you take all your measurements right, it's going to work out great. All right. So that was the story of me getting fired. It was pretty, <laughs> it was, uh, I need to write about it. I, 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 it put me in volume three of the book I'm doing for my daughter. Let me get caught up on the, uh, uh, Monique says, yeah, uh, miter saw, speed square, <laughs> measured through drums cut once. Yeah, Will Smith, like on the door from behind you. Yes, exactly, Will. Yes, yes, exactly. Here's the thing. Here's the trick, though. Um, it, you, you, I'll tell you one thing. When you go out on the internet, and you, you, you'll watch videos of people showing how to cut crown molding, and 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 it's it's just like talking to young bucks. I mean, I remember, I do remember when I was 26, 27 years old. I mean, just flipping, overflowing with testosterone. All right, just like Mr. Badass, Mr. Cocky, and so. You, you know, that's why a lot of young men get in fights, you know? So, so th th I mean, they could actually come to fisticuffs over which truck is better, Ford or Chevy, you know? I mean, come on. Now it's Ford, Chevy, Ram, or Toyota Tundra. All right, so, crutch word. The, you, you'll, you'll see the same arguments online from carpenters who, one will argue that, oh, coping, it's the only way to do it. Uh, you know, just... Cope, cope, cope. And and uh another one will say, no, 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 miter the joints, you know, miter the joints, you know, get a better fit, blah, 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 blah. All right. Here, here, here's what I discovered a long time ago. The um the mitering is better, and you'll get a much better looking joint than coping. It's faster. And here's the trick. Most carpenters, they assume that the corners of the room are 90 degrees. They are not always 90 degrees. <laughs> it could be 89. It could be 91. It could be 91 and a half. It could... And so what I did, I know this sounds crazy, I cut different sets of these short pieces of crown molding that are about a foot, maybe 16 inches long <clears throat> at, at either at, at a 45, at a 44, and a 43. And what happens when you go up and you start to fit these small pieces in the corner you may find that you get a perfect line. I mean, that you couldn't even put a piece of paper between it, where you might have a 46 degree angle cut on the right side and a 43 on the left. I know it sounds crazy. It's true. So I have this bucket filled with these things that are cut and marked, and I do it for both inside and outside corners. And the outside corners are especially the truth. If you think the outside corners are always 90, I've got a flipping bridge to sell you. And you, so what I do, what I would always do to show you how fast I would do it. First of all, you, when you go to put crown molding, just like that photo in the um, that's that I put a link to. I'll do it again. Here's the link. Go look at this photo. <clears throat> when you have the crown molding perfectly fitting up in the corner of the room, um, I would take a very fine pencil, you know, like this. Um, you know, not a carpenter's pencil. I mean, like a real old fashioned pencil. You know, I'm trying to hold it where it's dark you know, with a real fine tip, all right? And, you know, I would draw pencil lines up in the corners, like this is exactly, because here's what happens. The reason people have struggled with crown molding, they'll cut it, they'll think it's right, they'll go to put it up, is because they are actually, I'll, I'll use my phone, My this is a great idea. The phone um, is, I'm trying to hold it to the camera, it's so hard. They'll roll, whoa, they'll roll it in the, in the, um, They'll roll it. Oh, it's so hard. Uh, 
in the corner. In other words, it may be supposed to be there, but they may drop it down a little bit, <clears throat> or they may roll it a little too high. And even just moving it a sixteenth of an inch makes a huge difference. So you have to draw those pencil marks <clears throat> to know exactly where it fits. Then I would bring up my scrap pieces really quickly on a ladder, <laughs> mix them out, and I would. And once I got the right fit, I would write in the corner like forty-six here, forty-four there, whatever, whatever it is, forty-five, forty-three, whatever. Go around the room. I, I could do that. I could in, in a regular rectangular room. I could have all four corners figured out in no more than it, it it couldn't take me more than three minutes. All right. So now you've got it all figured out. And then all you have to have is your dimensions. You just have to have your long point dimension. And you know exactly where to measure that because you put the you put the pencil marks up in the thing. By the way, I I have a CD about this. I'm getting ready to transform. It's actually in this package right here. I did a big CD about all of this years ago, 20 years ago, and I'm getting ready to convert it to a streaming video that you can purchase. All right, but it's not ready today. If you're interested, just email me. The Once you have your lengths, then you could literally, I know this sounds crazy, on the ground, you could cut all four pieces, have it all worked out, you know, all your dimensions, and then get up there, boom, 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 put it in. And I'm telling you, I got so good at doing this, and you can too, that I could do, I, I would have the entire room finished and I would even have caulked the corners if, if it needed a tiny amount of caulk before another carpenter would have had three pieces up, you know, coping it, you know, his coping method. Because it's so, you know, to cope it is, to cope it really well. I mean, to do a really good job coping takes a long time. It's not easy. And most people goof it up and then you've got this big gap, you know, 16th of an inch gap that you got to caulk. And then they sit there and say, it's so much better. Give me a break. Here's another thing that you need to know about crumbling. Let's say you're putting it up in a big room and, and you have to have a splice. In other words, you don't have a piece long enough to go corner to corner. What's the best way to handle it? Same thing. You're going to have carpenters argue till the flipping cows come home that, oh, it's, you know, it's better to, to make a, a miter, a 45, a long joint instead of just butting two pieces together. I'm here to tell you, the best way to do it is to butt two pieces together. But what you have to do is where that splice is, you have to put a one foot long piece of triangular block that fills that entire gap so that the crown molding is touching right up against the block. So you're going to nail this block in. It's going to be nailed to the wall. And then you are, you know, you're going to cut your pieces. You're going to get them to fit perfectly. They're going to fit perfect. You know they fit perfect. Then you're going to take them down or hold them back a little bit, put a little bit of yellow glue on the back, put some glue on the block, glue everything, glue the edges, glue it all, put it up, boom, 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 nail it. And I'm telling you, that seam will never show. It will never crack. It's going to look awesome. That's the only way to seam two pieces of crown molding. I'm telling you. This is 45 years of experience talking. Let me get caught up on the comments in case there's a question. Um... MJ's back. Okay, about the wire. Yes. You want to know when you dig a trench into the ground, how did... Okay, so the code, I believe, says two feet. All right. So they really like to have electric buried two feet. All right, this is your own home. What I would do is you're going to put it in contour. I would go a foot deep. A foot deep is... Rarely do you have anybody digging or, or, or rototilling deeper than a foot. All right, so 16 inches would even be safer. Uh, just use a duckbill shovel, all right? You know what a duckbill shovel is? Get a get yourself a duckbill shovel. It's made for specifically for this job. And go, go 14, 16 inches deep. Now, here's what's really important. Shoot a video, uh, take a bunch of photographs, put it up in the cloud. You know, like once the trench is done, once the conduit's in, do a walking video and, and somehow get that up in the cloud, somehow create an address so that all future homeowners will, will be able to know exactly where that conduit is. All right. So that's how you do that. Um, Lorreen wants to know, uh, how should a buried wire be marked for future planning or digging? Okay. So Lorreen, I, I'm a big fan. Uh, they, they make wire that's rated for direct burial. I have it here at my own home. I hate it. I mean, I, I just, 
It, it's actually exposed on the ground now, going down to my dock. It eroded. They didn't, I mean, they must have only buried it six inches deep. I, I'm telling you, you, you always want to put wires that are outside in conduit. I'm just telling you, you want to put them in conduit. And then you already saw what I just said. You have to take photos and you have to, um, you just have to document it where it is. Also another question, Mr. Carter. So Mr. Carter, here, we got to get something straight right now. I don't have a photo handy real quickly. Uh, Mr. Carter was my dad. <laughs> that was my dad. I'm Tim, T-I-M. <laughs> so I, I appreciate, <laughs> I know if Steve were here, he'd say it's because of my, I'm a silver top. I get it. You're trying to give me some respect. I appreciate that. Just call me Tim. All right, here we go. What's the best way to become a licensed electrician without going to the trade school? I want to learn hands on. Um, I don't know what the, I don't know what the requirement is in New Jersey. So I can't answer for you. Um, I, I can tell you this. So that you 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 just said right there that your last sentence is the clue. That's the answer to your question. You said, I want to learn hands-on and get paid at the same moment. If I were you, I would go out tomorrow morning and start working for an electrician. I I am I get emails all the time from both homeowners and companies. They cannot find people to work. So you can get hired tomorrow morning. So go out and start working for a flipping electrician. And, but at the same time, find out what the requirements are in Jersey. It's probably some horrible draconian situation. Uh, and find out what you need to do to be able to become quote unquote licensed and then start on that track. Do whatever you got to do. But as far as getting paid and learning, tomorrow morning, you could have a job. Well, most certainly by next Monday. All right, uh, Marcus. For burning cable in the for burning cable in the UK, cover the cable with dust or sand, and the place play. Yes, yes, that's true. That's um, yes, that's another good way. Um, uh, that's another good way, Marcus. Um, I just like conduit because for you to hurt the cable, I mean, you've got to really damage the conduit. I mean, you've got to, you know, and most shovels. You you know you strike it one time you're not going to cut through the conduit generally so uh, that's why conduit's the only way to go and as I told uh, MJ yesterday um, always when when you run a cable when you run a cable through that when you're pulling your cable through that conduit pull with it an a, a secondary pull string do you understand what that means and and the pull string I'm talking about heavy stuff like um, Eighth inch, like eighth inch um, nylon, you know, braided nylon, because that's going to allow you if and, and, you know, and you always want to oversize the conduit a little bit. In other words, for example, MJ, I'd be putting in three quarter inch conduit and and I would put one one cable on that, you know, and and um, and then in the future, you'll be able to run another cable. You'll be able to run another 12 2 wire through that um, with ease. You know, but it's but you'll find it very hard to put two uh, 12, uh, 12 two wires in a half inch conduit. You'll find it very difficult, you know, or if you're going to put them all in one conduit, like I said, if you're going to have those three circuits, just put a one inch conduit in, put one inch tubing in plenty. You'll, you'll have enough room for the three cables and a pull string so that you could pull a fourth wire down the road. All right. So, yeah. And then I want you to come back and report to us when you get your job working for an electrician that takes your time. Don't don't be Mr. Impatient and just go work for any electrician. Do your due diligence and find out who who is a really good electrician. The last person you want to start working for some idiot. All right. Uh, and here I'll tell you how to find the best electrician. It's like finding the best contractor. Um. If I were you, you'll you'll discover that in your town or your city, there are businesses that sell, that are wholesale places that sell to electricians. In other words, they, most electricians will not go to Home Depot and Lowe's to get their stuff. They'll, they'll only do that in an emergency. So there are these special businesses that just sell all kinds of really great stuff to electricians. So you want to go there on 
any day, Monday through through Friday, about either 10 in the morning or two in the afternoon. Do not go early in the afternoon. Do not go at lunch. Do not go at the end of the day. Because in the morning at lunch and late in the day, that's when the electricians are there getting their stuff. It's generally very slow around 10 o'clock in the morning or two in the afternoon. So go to the um, counter and, and you want to ask for the general manager. And what you want to ask for is you just say, look, I am trying to get a job working for an electrician, but I only want to work for the best guys. So I'm interested who of all the electricians that come in here, who are the electricians that always buy the best material? I mean, they buy the best stuff and also that they pay their bills on time. In fact, they pay their bills early because most of these places, if you pay by the 10th of the following month, you get a 2% discount. Back in my day, back when I was building, I always did that. And each year I made about an extra $10,000, which back then was a lot of money. You know, so I took advantage of that 2% discount, you know, and so so that that communicates that the electrician is a smart businessman. And, and, and that general manager, and then you would, the final question is just say, if you were going to have electric work done at your home, tell me the names of the two electricians that you would hire. Because trust me, that the general manager, he, he knows who the losers are. <laughs> All right. He, he, he's not going to have a loser come to his home. And that's how you find the names of the great elect, electrical contractors. And I'm telling you right now, they are, if, as long as you can pass a drug test <laughs> and you, um, you, you know, you, you understand work ethic and you're honest, dude, you will, <laughs> they, they can't find people like you. All right. Any other questions? Love to answer your questions. These are great questions, by the way. Uh, always great questions. Wow. Um, so it doesn't matter what your questions are about your home. It could be anything. Uh, plumbing, roofing, electric, plaster. How about plaster? Any crown molding questions? Crown molding. All right. Crown molding. My first ebook I ever wrote is about crown molding. I, um, I'll put the link to it in here again. And I, I, I left it on special for this uh, live stream. I put it at $7. So it's a great, it's a great book. It, what's really interesting about this ebook, if you get it, is that I wrote this back at the time where you would, I would break the internet if I sent a file that was like a big file. And it, it just, you, it couldn't handle it. The internet couldn't handle it. So the photos in this ebook, they're a little small because they had to be small. You couldn't, you couldn't put big photos in an ebook. Uh, anyway, um, Marcus, did you find time to look at the concrete? I did not. Here's what happened last night. So <laughs> I was right after the um, right after the live stream. So it was late, like 10 after 6 or so, 5 after 6. I got into an email thread uh, with the, the one viewer, the, the good night gentleman, the good night guy. And... Um, because he was showing me and talking to me about this Discord, this website called Discord. And it looks very, very promising. I'm, I'm positive we're, I'm going to do this Discord thing. And, and just so you know, here's what the Discord is. If I, The best way for me to explain it is I would still stream on YouTube, all right? But if everybody had another browser window open, there is this discord is this amazing it's like a giant meeting room it's like a meeting room where people can talk to one another people can share photos um really enhanced i mean much 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 better than what's happening here the only thing that that youtube lets us lets you do is is just type something uh, you know type a few characters and that's it um anyway so I, I did that, and then by the time I was done with that, it was time to go downstairs and have some dinner. And, um, you know, so I did not look into it, but I'm going to look into it today. Will, um, well, I go for PVC because uh, the metal, it's just going to rust over time. I, you know, I, I would go PVC. You know, the gray... The grave schedule 40 PVC last a long time. It'll last a long time. The key thing is just to take photographs and even you could even do what you see the big people, the big boys do. 
if, if you've ever gone out into the country uh, or do hiking like I do around here in New Hampshire, they, they've got these three and four foot high stakes that have got written on them. It says buried water line here or buried natural gas line or buried electric cable, whatever, buried pipeline. You know, they've got them like every, I don't know, 300 feet, you know. So in your yard, you could put make little ones. You could make little markers that somehow uh, stood out or whatever that 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 would indicate where the flipping conduit is buried underneath the ground. And like I said, at the very least, you got to take photographs. And and here, here's the thing, just so you know, it's a. I actually used this uh, service back in the early winter. You can take like I I've got this is an Android phone and you know and I I use Google Photos all right so I I like it a lot because as soon as I take a photo and I'm connected to Wi-Fi it automatically is sucked up on into the cloud. You can I can go into my Google Photos right now while I'm talking doing this live stream. I could pick out a few photos, click click click, and in one hour I could have eight by ten glossies down at the CVS store. I'm serious. I mean, they have, it's just flipping amazing. Like if you, they've made it so easy, you know, back in the day, a few years ago, you could use Snapfish and other websites to do it, but it was clunky and you had to upload the photos. Well, guess what? Google figured all that out. Google's Google sidestepped around all that. The photos are already there. You just have to go in, click print, boom. So dig your trench, take a bunch of really great photos with things in perspectives. Don't take the photos straight down. No one cares about that. You need to take a low oblique photo. What You know what a low oblique photo is? It's like the standard photo that you might take looking at a shed. And you're, you're taking a photo of your shed, but in front of the shed coming towards the camera is the ground. All right. So there have to be things in the photo that, would, that people could identify and say, oh, if I stand right here and they hold the photo up, they go, oh, the trench has got to be right there. So you have to... <laughs> You know, don't be stupid. Don't be taking photos just aiming straight down at the ground. That's not going to tell them anything. All right. So take the photos, put them in a Ziploc plastic bag. All right. I mean, you know, after you get them printed and and tape them, put a push pin, do whatever down, down in the basement at the electric panel. That's where you put the photos so that the next homeowner has got them. That's the simple thing. And you you should do all this all the time with, with other things. I've talked about this. Uh, you know, the owner's manuals that come with faucets. Like when you buy a new faucet, it's got a manual and it's got a parts list and it's got all the stuff, uh, troubleshooting guide. Don't throw that thing away. Don't put it in a file folder. Put it in a flipping Ziploc storage bag and tape it to the inside of the kitchen base cabinet, right where people can see it. You know, because it's going to get lost in a file folder. It's going to get thrown away. Everybody needs it at the kitchen sink or the vanity sink or wherever. All right. None of this is hard. None of this is hard. <laughs> I think I think I need to get a T-shirt made that says that. Maybe maybe I'm going to take Steve's idea and, and start having a merchandise. I can sell merchandise and uh, I'm going to write that idea. None of this is hard. <laughs> we'll get T-shirts made up of that. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Oh my gosh. With the Ask the Builder logo. All right. <laughs> okay, MJ. Uh, why can't the lines be run above ground and suspend in the air? Uh, oh, I'll tell you why. <laughs> because I don't think you're going to... Um, I don't think you're going to get it 16 feet in the air. Um, I think that your wife, if you're married, will kill you. <laughs> Um, it's going to look ugly. Um, it's, uh, you're probably not going to suspend it. Right. Uh, the wind's going to wear it out. The, it, where, when, when the wind blows, it's going to move and wherever you have it connected to things, that movement, it's going to wear out and short out. I can think of a hundred reasons why I would never want to put it overhead. All right. So, um, you know, someone's going to run into it with a ladder, an aluminum ladder, and get electrocuted. I mean, there's all kinds of other things that can go wrong. Do not, do not put this wire in the air. <laughs> all right. Um, any other questions? None of this. I think I am going to get a T-shirt made up that way. <laughs> 
That'd be fun. All right. Um, <laughs> oh, my gosh. Oh. <laughs> I, um, <laughs> oh, gosh. What did I want to say? Oh, we had to, uh, 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 this is kind of off, off to the side, a sidebar comment. You know, an hour and a half ago, Kathy and I were just getting back from voting. So today is voting day in, in, in our town. I don't know if it is all across New Hampshire. Probably is. I don't know. So we have our town elections, you know, the first week of March. I think they do that on purpose. You know, they just very odd time and uh, low turnout, you know, but uh, we had some really great candidates running for school board and I sure as heck hope they get in. Um, um, I, Lorraine, I would love some ideas about merchandise. I would love if, if you've got some ideas. Help me out with this. What can we do? How how can we do some, some stuff? I think it'd be fun. Uh, so I um, we went to vote, and um, I I just um, after what's happened in the past two three years, I've basically lost all faith in voting um, because the the my town actually uses the Dominion machines. All right, so I don't even know that that my that my voting counted, you know, because it could be manipulated. So I, I just, if I had the time, I would, I would find out, okay, you know what, what, what what's it take? I, I want to do a flipping hand count. In other words, as a citizen, I should be allowed. I would hope, I would hope I'd be allowed to, to get the votes and say, put me in a room. I won't, I'm not going to leave with them. You know, put a, put a police officer near me. I don't care videotape me. I don't care. I would just like to do my own flip and count to see how accurate it is compared to your stupid machine. All right. Um, okay. That's good to know, Lorraine. Wonderful. Um, <laughs> I think, I think what I normally say is nothing about this is hard. Um, so um, <laughs> nothing about this is hard. <laughs> Uh, so I, um, I, I, um, anyway, yes, I want to do some, some, some swag. Um, so yes, I, I would love if you would help me out with this. Uh, <laughs> and, and there's some cool things that you can do in discord with gifting and stuff. <laughs> well, I, Lorian, so I actually have a, uh, yeah, nothing about this. I actually kind of have a saying I've never trademarked it, but I probably should. I just never thought it was worth the the, the fee because it's like three hundred and seventy five bucks to trademark something. Might be five hundred now. Um, at the bottom of my newsletter, my motto or my slogan is "Do it right, not over." So we would definitely have a T shirt with that. So do it right, not, do it right, comma not over. You know that's um, which is the same thing is is. Um, um, I apologize. I can't remember. Monique said above, you know, measure three times, cut once. So do it right, not over. So that's 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 a slogan. But but I can have multiple slogans. Yeah. But that's yeah. Nothing about this is hard. So that's exactly what I say. You're exactly right. Nothing about this is hard. And uh, uh, <laughs> oh, geez. Um, all right. Any questions about anything? I'm happy to answer it. What can I? Um, I have a I have to do a consult call on Thursday morning about a woman. A woman purchased a consult for me, and she's got um, it's a really interesting situation. She wants to put a reverse osmosis machine at her house, and the way the reverse osmosis works, you know, it needs to ha it's got a drain pipe, it, it, so it can get rid of the impurities and whatever. And she cannot connect it. She doesn't have enough room in her setup and her. And her plumbing, the the, the uh, branch arm and her wall of her kitchen sink was roughed in a little too high. And uh, there's not enough room in the tailpiece. So she's trying to figure out how to do it. But I'm going to have her send me a photo. And I think I've got a great solution for her that she would not have thought of. So um, um, anyway. Yeah. Um, yeah, I probably should do that. I um I probably should. I'll find out what the current um, current price of the trade market is. The big problem with trademarks, if you don't know this, uh, 
you know, I've trademarked, you know, Ask the Builders trademarked, and, and is that there are so many classifications. They've got the oddest setup. It's not like you get, in other words, you, you know, to get like the ultimate protection for Ask the Builder, you might have to trademark it in 10 different categories. It's crazy, you know. Anyway, uh, it's a very complex, very complex. Fortunately, copyright, pretty simple. Um, last week, uh, last Tuesday, I uh, um, I filed for the official copyright. I'll, I'll get an actual certificate for my latest uh, book, uh, The Sewer Gas Smell, um, because that's really important. The the reason and you've got ninety days. Once you once you sell your first copy or it's out or it's available for for uh, purchase, you have ninety days to copyright it. It's automatically copyrighted, but you have, but to register the copyright, uh, you only have ninety days, and and you get all kinds of interesting protections with that. And in other words, if in the future somebody is caught plagiarizing or copying the book, you you. And, and you sue them, you, you, they have to pay all the attorney's fees. They pay everything. Um, so anyway, so uh, trademark, trademark's really important too, but it's much more complex, very complex. Um, yes. So a 20 year company had to stop. Exactly. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's, Trademark stuff. I was in a trademark battle many, many years ago, 25 years ago. I won, but um, it's horrible. All right, MJ, what is wet vent and when is it permissible to use it? All right, here's what a wet vent is. I know, Will. I know. Where's the flipping white boy? Okay. I'm in a pretty good mood today, wouldn't you say? So let's draw a wet vent. Uh, so... Here is a, a pipe. Here's a drain pipe. Here's a branch arm. Here's a trap. Um, and then, and then let's up here do a similar thing. And the stack just keeps going. All right. I've got, I'm coming. I think this is going to be easier on Discord. We're going to find out, though. All right. So let me hold it like this first. So this is just like a kitchen sink, or it could be a vanity sink. And here's the P-trap under the sink. And here's the branch arm. And this is the vertical stack in the wall. And so when, when the water flows through here and drops down, uh, air enters the top and comes down here. All right. So Because this this water is pushing air out of the way and that air needs to get replaced. All right, now, look up here. Imagine if in the same stack, you had above it another sink right here with the P-trap. And if you filled this sink with water, and if this was a smaller diameter pipe, you know, like a two inch pipe or even an inch and a half vent pipe, and you filled this big sink up here totally to the brim with water, and then you pulled the plug, what would happen is this entire branch arm fills with water, and it's very possible that most of this pipe is solid with water. And as that water flows down this direction and goes past right here, it will suck the, it creates a vacuum. And it will suck, the vacuum is so powerful, it will suck the water out of this trap. So that, so in other words, this, this, fixture here is wet venting this fixture. Now, when is it allowed? It is allowed in the code. Here's when it's allowed. If this was a three inch pipe here, if this is a three inch pipe and this is an inch and a half pipe to a vanity in a bathroom and this pipe here um, could then have a 90 at the bottom and then there could be a Y that goes to a toilet. So this is actually the vent for the toilet but it has to stay three inch pipe to here. And you can, in other words, this is the vent for the toilet. And here you've got this sink wet venting the toilet. Well, why is it allowed? It's because even if you filled the vanity with, with completely with water, and even if this pipe completely filled with water and started to enter and go down, 
this giant three inch pipe, you would never be able to fill it with air or fill it completely with water. It'd be impossible. So even if the toilet flushed, um, I guess the point is, uh, as much of this water that would go out, it would never be enough water to vacuum the water out of the toilet, you know, out of the trap in the toilet. So as long as you maintain this three inch pipe all the way up to here, you know, to above the T, um, you're allowed to wet vent the toilet. So there you go. Hope that helps. Um, all right. Hello, Jimmy. Um, Oscar. It's good to actually meet you in Iraq. My question is, what is this your take on, on crown molding on a fat? Um, I do not quite understand your question. I apologize. Um, um, so I, I explained that the way that you cut crown molding, unless you have a compound miter saw, a, a compound saw that can, if you don't have a compound miter saw that, that cuts angles two ways, you have to put the crown molding in the saw this way. But if you have a compound miter saw, and most people don't, and even if they did, they don't, they might not have it set right because you have to figure out, you have to figure out what is the angle that the crown molding is in the ceiling. It's not always sitting in the ceiling at a 45. And you must figure that angle out exactly if you're going to try to cut crown molding flat with a compound miter saw. So the safer way to do it is just to do it the way that you see in this uh, photo. That's the, you'll never go wrong. You will never, ever go wrong holding it in the, in the miter saw that way. You just have to remember that the uh, crown mold's got to be upside down. <clears throat> uh, you're welcome, MJ. Um, remember, don't put that daggone wire in the air. It's got to go on the ground. Family dollar store on 351 day. Um, what, how come I am so, how come I'm not getting that? Um, I, I, I don't, I don't go to the family dollar store. Um, <clears throat> I don't understand that. I feel like adult. I don't understand that reference, Will, with that. Um, I must have said something. Uh, I don't know. Anyway. Um, all right. So anyway, so now you know about wet venting, MJ. Um <clears throat> I've been a licensed master plumber since uh, 1981. So I like doing plumbing a lot. My daughter, who just moved to Long Beach, California, texted me a photo yesterday saying, Dad, the, <laughs> the vanity sink in the bathroom is clogged up. What do I do? And she said, I poured Durano in it. And she put in parentheses in her text, I know, I know, because she knew I was going to yell at her. Like, what is wrong with you? I mean, I mean, You've only been around me 30 years. Have you ever seen me use Drano in our home? <laughs> why, why would you think it's a good idea to use Drano if you've never seen me use it? All right. What, what am I missing? <laughs> oh, whiteboards. Uh, <laughs> okay. Oh, and I know where that is. I just was by, I just drove by that place today. I just drove by it. I, I went to town earlier to go get groceries, materials. And, you know, Will, I don't know if you have to do the same thing where you are, but when I go to town, I, well, I live farther out of town. I, I don't go for one thing. I have to kind of have like three or four or five things to do. And so um, going to the dump today was one of them. You know, I, I we have to take our trash to the dump. And, um, and so when I left the dump, I was on my way to the grocery and I drove right by that store. So I know exactly what it is. So, okay, you win. You win. I'm going to go get the flipping whiteboard. I will get it this week. I don't think I'm going to go out tomorrow, but I will go to town and get that flipping whiteboard. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Okay. Great question about wet venting. That's why this live stream is so good. You never know what you're going to get. Um, all right, Oscar. Uh, so did I answer your question? If you're still here, Oscar, did I answer your question about, um, cutting crown on a flat? I don't, I think you just mean by cutting the crown molding flat on the table of the miter saw. And you can do that as long as it's a compound miter saw. So that means that the saw has got to lay over and then you have to rotate it to 45 as well. 
In other words, you're putting, here's what you need to understand about uh, crown molding cuts. They're really not much different than the cut that we put on a jack rafter or a hip rafter. In other words, when we're doing, when we're framing a roof and, and we have that special cut on the, what we call a cheek cut, um, that is a compound cut. All right. So crown molding is a compound cut. That's why people have trouble with it. Transfer station. I know. Tra that's true, though. That's what that's. I call it the dump. <laughs> MJ. MJ is going to be a regular here. We're going to turn MJ into a master carpenter and a master electrician and maybe a plumber, too. He says, I installed a shark bite 7 inch for the washer, hot and cold. What's your opinion? I, I don't like shark bite. I'm not a shark bite guy. Um, I, I'm an I'm Uponor. All right. So here's what I am. All right. So stand by. This is this is what I use. <clears throat> I hope this works. Yes. Uh, it's right here. And I'm getting a column for you. And I just want to make sure before I give you the link, I want to make sure that the video is in it. Um, stand by. It's got to be right there. It's got to be where the hole is. That hole's got to be where the video is. It's building. Yes, there. Uh, no, there's got to be another one. Here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is it. All right, MJ. So I'm an Oop Onor guy. Um, Oop Onor was the... They were the people who invented PEX over in Germany, I think, and uh, about 35 years ago. So go to that column, read the column, uh, watch the my video. You'll see a video of me showing you how easy it is to do. And it's in this right here. I actually demonstrated it on um, a live stream about two weeks ago. So this is how I connect PEX. So... Um, it's a compression fitting and this ring here. So this PEX pipe, um, it has a memory. That's what's so cool about it. It's a special plastic that when you stretch it, uh, it's like spandex, you know. And, you know, there's certain people who should not wear spandex. All right. So we all know that. Anyway, this plastic wants to go back to this diameter. But I'll hold it up here. You might be able to see. Here, it started to flare out, and it definitely has flared out up in here. And this is a secondary ring that also wants to go back, and it provides secondary compression on, on this. And, and there's what you can't see is, is this black, it's a coupling that goes down to all the way to here. So what you see here, all these ridges are on this side too. So this, this system, in my opinion, is so much better than shark bite. It, there's no comparison. Um, so watch that video. Um, yeah, I know. Uh, well, inch and a quarter pipe though. Um, come on, Jimmy. Um, Hey dude, I've been saying it for flipping months here. Inflation. It's going to get worse. You, you, if you need that kind of pipe right now, you better buy it. Cause let me tell you a month from now, it's going to be 1500 bucks. All right. Um, <clears throat> so anyway, MJ, um, also what, about the new compression guns for copper fittings instead of solder. Yeah, so I've got that too. Uh, stand by. I did a really cool video. My son was so unhappy. Um, um, uh, press tool. Where do you see this video? I did. I shot this video on. Um, um, oh, uh, I don't know why I cannot. Uh, it doesn't come out um, how to. Um, I'm trying to find this exact. Um, oh, Christ, come on. Just a second. I'm going to have to go back and find it. I, I, I don't know why it's not coming up in my search, um, but it will be in this list right here. Uh, it, you just have to bear with me, but I'm going to show you this. To make a long short, um, I love the press tools. I have a press tool. Uh, when I put in my daughter's um, boiler at her home up in Bar Harbor, uh, all we used, um, I mean, I was doing inch and a half pressing inch and a half joints. All right. So um, uh, it's, it's fantastic. The press tool 
is is I can't say enough good things about the press tool. Uh, the problem is the fittings are expensive, but they they know that because they know that um, they know. I'm just going through this. I, if Loreen was here, she'd be able to talk intelligently and do this. I can't do it. I, I'm a man, you know. I mean, cannot multitask. I know you're laughing like crazy, Loreen. Um, I'm almost there. Jeez, oh Pete. Um, I didn't realize I added that much content to the website. Here we go. Golly. Why did that not come up in the, um, uh, I do not know why this did not come up in the, uh, search. That's crazy. I want to make sure it's the right video for you. Yep, it is. Here we go. So when you go here, MJ, and watch this video, it's about a 12 minute video. Very cool. Um, watch that, um, multitasking can be learned. I don't know, man. Can you teach an old dog new tricks? Um, watch that video. So copper press tools, fantastic. They're fantastic. They're fantastic. One, here's one of the things I love about the copper press technology. If you've ever been in a situation, and I have been, where a water line has ruptured and water's just squirting out of it, all right? And the only way you're going to shut it off is at the street. No problem. If you got a copper press tool and you got a copper valve, so you can buy the valves. You can buy ball valves that are press. They're they're press valves, so they've got the O ring and the press thing already built into the valve. So you you this pipe that's broken, it's squirting water. I mean, you might get wet doing this, but you go ahead and cut off the pipe, so you got a nice clean cut. Water squirting out of the flipping pipe. You, you take the valve, you open up the ball valve, all right? And so you put it in the stream and slide it on the pipe. Now water is squirting out of the flipping ball valve. No big deal. You're just, you're fine. You put the copper press tool on the ball valve part, press it. It's done in four or five seconds. Cool. You take the handle to the ball valve, turn it 90 degrees, boom. Water leak's done. You could never, ever do that soldering. You cannot have any water in the line when you solder. All right. So simple as that. That's so there's a lot of really great advantages to the press tools. And just so you know, that same technology is also available for um black iron. Um you, you you don't have to thread black iron pipe anymore. You can press gas lines with uh, those fittings. It's crazy. I don't know that I would trust that. There's something, something inside of me just does not like that. I just don't. I don't know. I just don't like it. I I um I don't know. You'd ha I'd have to see a lot of testing to prove to me that the press fitting on black iron is stronger than what you would have to pull off a fitting off of a threaded end of a pipe. You would have to prove to me that the press fitting is stronger before I would ever do it on gas. All right. So Jimmy says. Uh, uh, um, running on a farm, 70 acres to multiple houses and animal farm hydrants. Yeah. Yeah. You're going to need a big pipe for that, buddy. Better make sure that inch and a quarter is big enough. Might not be. You might need a uh, two inch pipe. Um, very complex to figure that out. There are all kinds of formulas, Jimmy, you have to do to make sure you got enough water, man. Uh, not easy. Uh, Lorraine likes farming videos. Very interesting. Uh, I'm interested in farming. I just don't, we'll see if I can grow tomatoes this year. I, I, I just did so, so last year. <laughs> I've got a whole new plan this year. <laughs> so anyway, um, Kathy thinks it's hilarious because <laughs> she's a, she's got a green thumb, but all for indoor plants and shade garden plants. So she thinks my attempts at tomato, she thinks she gets great pleasure out of watching me fiddle around with tomatoes. <laughs> I keep telling her every time I make her laugh, I add an, an extra few hours to her life. I said, you know, I, I need to have you around here. So that's why I make you laugh all the time. <laughs> oh my gosh. All right. Any other questions about whatever? I mean, um, make raised beds. Yes. Well, here's what I'm actually going to do this year. No raised beds. Screw that. Where we get the most sun, the best sun is right on my flipping deck. So I've got these, my father-in-law 
Kathy keeps yelling at me. Why don't you do what dad used to do? Why don't you do what dad used to do? So Kathy's dad, my wonderful father-in-law, he would grow tomatoes in five gallon drywall buckets. All right. I mean, the guy had millions of flipping tomatoes. He would bring bags of them down to our house. All right. So just having them in a flipping five gallon bucket. So I'm doing the same thing, man. And our deck, our deck gets really fantastic sun. So I'm going to, uh, I know exactly where I'm going to put these things. I'm going to have like four, four buckets. All right. So anyway. All right. Um, here we go. Let's see. Um, my former coworker built numerous ones in his yard and has the most amazing craft. Yeah, I know. I've seen these raised beds. I've seen them. The big thought, the big problem I have with it is, and, and I don't trust the information from the uh, Southern Forest Products Association. You know, you would have to use treated lumber, um, you know, because if you just put in regular lumber, it's just going to rot out in no time. And, you know, back in the day, you know, they stopped selling it residentially about 10, 12, 15 years ago, CCA, you know, copper chromated arsenic. So the, the, the new treated lumber does not have chromium and arsenic in it. But, um, you know, if that would leach out into the soil, I, I would not trust it. But that's just me. Um, yeah, two lines is a backup. Yeah, but you still... You you bet, Jimmy. I'm telling you right now, you better do the uh, calculations on that. You do not want to. You want to get one chance to put that in. You want to get the right size line. You might need two inch. Um, MJ, can, can I run hot and cold water to a shed? Of course you can. Yes, you can do anything you want. That's the cool thing. That we you're still here. Well, depends on where you are in America. <laughs> certain certain places can't do certain things, uh, and also. I tend to be more of an ask for forgiveness guy than ask for permission, just so you know. Does it need to be done above ground or below ground? Uh, so I don't, what, what I would tend to do uh, in a shed, I would just be running a cold water line to the shed, all right, you know, three quarter inch. It's got to be below the frost level, all right, if you if you want to have the water year round. And I'm assuming that the shed's going to be heated. Um so you would just run cold water to the shed and then in the shed, you can get very small water heaters. You know, they, they, they make these things called like a tiny Titan. Uh, you can get very small uh, electric water heaters, storage water heaters, you know, like maybe 20 gallon, whatever. Uh, so you're not going to run a hot water line from the house all the way out to the shed. You're not going to do that. No, they do not do that. You're going to run just one cold water line. Probably going to need to be three quarter inch minimum. Uh, so tomatoes, three dollars. I don't, yeah, I'm, I'll have plenty of tomatoes this year. And I, I grow the Rutgers type They're It's a really neat tomato. Uh, they, when they're the, the size of the Rutgers is, um, it's about the size of a baseball or major league baseball, not much bigger at all. And it's very, very solid, very meaty. It's not, doesn't have a lot of void space in it. So look, look up Rutgers. That's the, it's a, it's an old, it's an old strain or old variety. Uh, Josh says, uh, line, yeah, I guess you could. You, yeah, but you'd have to make sure that you can put poke drainage holes in it. You got, you can't have a, you know, yes. Yeah. You just have to poke holes so the water can get out. Um, Will Smith, I've done the bucket tomatoes on our deck. Needed, okay, yeah. Exactly. Yeah, I know. I uh, uh, I'm I got to put the cage up. Absolutely. But Rutgers, I've got the little package right here. You can see the name right under tomato. I'm trying to get it so it's not blown out. It's in white, you know. So are it's just like the university, Rutgers University or whatever college. So that's the one. Um, but as, as the season goes on, uh, you know, I'm going to, uh, share photos and stuff. So, so more of them sprouted. Let me show you. So I just, I, I planted them. I planted these bad boys. I, I really enjoy doing this. This is only the second year that I've grown them from seed. Um, I did, I planted these on March 1st. So look, you can see I've got, um, one, two, three, four, pretty high. 
And then I've got another one coming out right here. You can see that coming out. But in four of these pods so far, nothing's coming out. I don't quite understand why the four, four are pretty empty. But that's okay. If all these make it, I'm going to have plenty of plants. All right. So right now, if all these make it, I'll be in good shape. So um, it's really kind of amazing. So, I mean, just I just I planted them on March 1st. All right. So I'm keeping them warm on this little portable right behind me. That's a little portable radiator. So they stay warm right there. And now that they're way up high, you know, I got to keep that cap off. You know, I, I water them so they don't dry out, but don't want to overwater them, blah, blah, blah. Um, Lorene says he just brought in a lot of dirt and did not line it. Yeah, I wouldn't line it. I don't, I don't like the liner idea that Josh said. Um, no offense. Um, we have some people up here near, near me. Down on... Uh, what's called Lower Bay Road. It runs along the lake here. Um, the guy's got flipping uh, incredible garden. Oh, man. And the thing that's remarkable about it is he doesn't get... Um, I'm actually stunned he can grow stuff in it because he, the, the, uh, he's got a line of trees that are 100 feet tall that's only 40 feet away from the garden that... that between him and the east. I mean, so it, he, it, this garden only gets like direct sun, I don't know, for maybe four or five hours a day. Then it's in the shade again. I, I you know, at least on my on my deck and up uh, on my deck, these tomatoes, man, they're going to be in the sun from literally from sun up. I mean, until uh, until like three in the afternoon. So, I mean, they're going to get eight, nine hours of sunlight every day. Um. Okay, gardening. Thank you, Jimmy, for that. Thank you. Um, I will. I am. Um, <laughs> I, this is going to be the year. This is the year that uh, I I will have no shame, and I can. You know, Kathy won't be able to tease me so much. Um, and you're gonna you're gonna follow me. You're gonna follow the saga of the tomatoes. All right. <laughs> you're gonna. I'll be sharing photos, and who knows? Maybe I can even live stream out on the deck one day. We'll see. Um, I don't see why I couldn't uh, just set the laptop on. I, in the summer, I, I have this really wonderful deck, and, and um, it's got a table with a big, big umbrella over it. And so I'll take my laptop and I'll just work out there all day long. You know, so I. The biggest trouble is you can't get much done on the weekend because the the motorboats are so noisy. You know, so I'd never be able to live stream on a weekend. You'd never hear me. All right, Jimmy says, uh, with inflation and communism, we better start. Growing. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Exactly. No, it's very true. Um, yeah, except, <laughs> except, Lorena, I suck at it. I'm not a, I mean, I'm not a gardener. It's just little tomatoes, all right? I'm just going to have like four buckets of tomatoes. Not, I, I don't, I, I don't pretend to be. <laughs> to be a gardener. And, and Kathy would just shake her head. I mean, she just knows I just, I'm a loser at it. <laughs> so, anyway, we'll, uh, we'll see. You, you'll, uh, you'll see next, you'll see the summer. You'll see. They'll, they'll come out really great. So, um, all right. Do you have any questions about anything about your home? Happy to answer them. Got quite a few people here. Um, happy to answer your questions. I don't care what it is. Um, I don't care. Um, <laughs> Oh, interesting. Uh, <laughs> uh, anyway, answer, uh, answer. Ask me anything you want. I don't care what it is. Um, it could be a, a so, sell Carter's Lakeside Tomatoes. <laughs> um, if we golf, if we golf later in the season, I'll I'll bring you some. Well, but you already have your own. You know. <laughs> oh my gosh. Um, anyway. <laughs> You, it could, you could be asking me about laminate flooring. You could ask a question about, you name it, you can ask it. Um, MJ's had some really great questions, especially the one about hot and cold water to a shed. No hot water to the shed. You're going to just make hot water there. You're running cold water to the shed. But you really have to do that right. If you're going to run that to the shed, um, 
if you're not going to heat that shed in the wintertime and if you're living in an area where it freezes, you really have to think about how you're going to, you know, get that line. If, if you're not going to use the shed in the wintertime, then you don't have to bury the line below the frost line, the water line, because you just have to remember to, um, you know, blow it out, drain out the water, get the water out of the line. Just like the people here, all these people that live around me have got irrigation systems for their lawns. So in the fall, the, the, these irrigation companies come with air compressors and they blow, they, they turn off the water and then they, they drain and blow out all the irrigation lines and soil so they don't freeze and burst. So you just have to do the same thing for your shed water line. All right. Uh, ask the, ask the tomato, tomato nader. I don't know. I, I, I'm telling you, I'm not, I am not a gardener. This is, um, if Kathy were, it's a good thing Kathy's here, not here, because she would just tell you that she would tell you that don't believe him. She would say, don't believe anything he says about gardening. All right. Cause everything, cause every time he's tried it, it's been a failure. <laughs> so, <laughs> oh my gosh. All right. So if you have any questions, um, now is the time to ask him. Otherwise I'm going to get out of here. Um, because I I just I'm just out of topics. I don't have anything to talk about. I don't have anything. Steve's not here to wind us up about uh, <laughs> the illness or anything else. Um, so if you have a question, I'll give you. It's like last call. Like at a, it's it's like last call at, at a um, at a bar. You know, my daughter used to be the head bartender at El Bate in Old San Juan, Puerto Rico. She did the overnight shift. You know, bars in Puerto Rico. They close at seven in the morning <laughs> or six in the morning, either six or seven. Woo. I mean, in, in Ohio, they closed at two 30 in the morning, but man, six o'clock in the morning, you can drink literally all night long in Puerto Rico. Um, well, Lorene, my father-in-law, he did it. He grew tomatoes in five gallon buckets for flipping years. All right. So it, it's going to work. MJ says we need three football fields set up for plumbing, electric, carpentry. Have you teach everything? Yeah, right. Um, um, yes, I, that would be nice. But boy, I um, here you're this you're going to find this hard to believe. I did a um, this is a true story. So I did about two and a half months ago. Uh, I had an idea where I could do really in-depth videos to, to exactly what you're talking about and, and have them as classes. And, um, and I surveyed my list of 25,000 people. And I got back like no interest, like zero interest in it. So I just backed away from the project. I just don't think the interest is there. The trouble, here's the trouble. The trouble is <clears throat> um, it's really expensive to pull off if you want to do it right. I mean, it's so expensive because I just know from all the years of recording professional video, you would have to have three videographers there, three really good videographers. It would all have to be orchestrated ahead of time. Um, they would have to have the angles right. It's it's really hard to do. Oak Grove says, I had an uncle many years ago that would sp split a hay bale in half. In the split, okay. Then plant a tomatoes on the outer edge of the hay bale. Interesting. Uh, yeah, I can see how that might work. I would I would absolutely think that would work. Absolutely. Wow. Very interesting. Um, oh, Will, I, I, this is a great question. Will says, have you ever stopped by Martin's? <clears throat> yes, I did. Yes, I stopped at them and, and I, I was in there for about five minutes and left. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Oscar says, yes, got it. Thanks, I'm at the dentist. Uh, LOL with your comments. The secretary keeps looking at me. That's great. Oscar is watching Ask the Builder live at the dentist office. I love it. I love everything about it. Uh, so anyway, Martins. 
I went to Martin's and um, I, it was interesting, but I just got this, I got this overwhelming feeling. I, I kind of wandered over to their tool section and everything just looked really bad. Everything looked really cheap. I mean, it just like, I, I don't know about this place. I don't know about this place. So I, um, it was fascinating. I mean, they had everything. I mean, I, I could have wandered through the store for a while, but I just wonder, I just wonder if they are, are they buying most of the stuff from China? Is it, is it Chinese stuff, just Chinese garbage? Um, because I just have, because the stuff that I was looking at, I have never seen made by an American tool manufacturer. That's what bothered me. So I just thought, well, if they're doing this, if they're buying everything from China in the tool area, or most of the things, not all, <clears throat> then everything else in the store, is it is it a bunch of it? Is it just crap coming out of China? And so I, I just can't, I, I have a really hard time buying Chinese stuff. So I just thought I'm out of here. So might work for somebody else, but not me. Um, I may go back at some point uh, when I go to my daughter's next time. And, and there's a Martin's. Where did I see one? Oh, there's a Martin's um, uh, on, on my way to you. There's one really close to you. Where did I see that at? Um, right there in gray, maybe? I swear I just wrote. Yeah, it's got to be in gray. I think there's one right there by I-95 in gray. Um, I'm almost positive there was one there. Um, anyway. Uh, all right. Any other questions? Otherwise, uh, this last call, last call. If you don't have any questions, I'll get out of here and I'll be back tomorrow. Uh, there's basement has all the tools and number here. Some good, some cheap to walk and walk the others. Okay. Yeah. Well, not that it means anything, but a, a, a lot of those, tools. Like, I mean, I DeWalt and Milwaukee make good stuff, but some of it's coming from China or some of their stuff is made in China. Um, Marcus is exactly right. Um, you have to have tools are so important. They are. Um, tonight is a burger night. Kathy and I are having burgers tonight. Um, it's like a summer picnic. I got some brand new kosher dill pickles. Uh, yeah, Lewiston Gray. Yes, yeah, there's one in Gray. I, I knew I knew I had just passed it because we were just up at my daughter's, you know, two, three weeks ago. Um, so yeah, we're gonna have burgers tonight. So burgers and probably I don't know if we're gonna do onion rings or french fries, one one or the other. I don't know. So uh so Marcus, um ba I'm I I I'm very partial to Bosch. Uh, Bosch power tools. I think that Bosch, um, they make, fan I, I've got, they make fantastic power tools, period. Milwaukee is pretty damn close. I mean, I, I don't have a lab to test them in to, for like to do a, a, a very scientific durability test. But if I had to rate tools, I would say that Bosch and Milwaukee are the top ones uh, DeWalt would be right underneath them. DeWalt is uh, it makes a good power tool. Uh, so, um, uh, hey, Jason, how you doing? Uh, so I hope that answers your question. So I'm a big, uh, big Bosch guy. Love, love, love Bosch stuff. Lo I mean, I, I have a Bosch um, belt sander that's probably 40 years old, maybe 35. Uh, still runs like the day I got it out of the box. All right. Of course, I take really good care of my stuff. Um, I have a, I still have, get this. The first power tool I ever bought was a Porter cable, back when Porter cable was really good, a screw gun um, for drywall. And I bought it 47 years ago. Still have it. Still works perfectly. You can barely read the name on it, Porter cable, but. Um, Really, really great screw gun. Um, uh, you know, the cats, our two cats, that's a great question. Um, <clears throat> our two cats, Finn and Nala, they, um, they're they they're like typical cats in a way. I mean, they're just like, 
you know, they're so fickle and, um, I mean, they're very affectionate with Kathy. I mean, the cats, Kathy and the cats are like this, all right? Just like I was with the dog, you know, Lady the dog, all right? You know, so, um, and Lady was very affectionate with Kathy too, but Lady and I were like this, all right? So um, I would say they don't miss her at a, at, at a moment. I don't think they miss her. You know, remember my daughter had her own cat and she kept it up in the room with her. Every now and then she would let it out. She brought a, a kitten back from Puerto Rico. It's called, she named it Yeti. It's a beautiful, beautiful cat. Long hair, beautiful, like a white. It's got some beautiful markings. Uh, but she took Yeti out to Long Beach and Yeti is very happy in the new house, the new apartment. Um, uh, so Will says, uh, oh, MJ, thanks so much, Peter. I'll be back. Okay, good. Good for you. Be back here. I love your questions. Um, I'm happy to help you. Will says, we uh, we will go to the big Martins in Lewiston after golf and ice cream. Okay. All right. I'm up for that. I've, fig I've already figured that's an all-day deal, man. I mean, I've got five hours of flipping driving tied up. All right. <laughs> it's two and a half each way, you know, to get to get to Fox. All right. So um, uh, and then the golf's going to take us four and a half. And, then you know, it's going to be a long day. It's going to be an 11 hour. So I'm going to leave here early. I'm going to leave here really early at sunup, probably, if not before. So we can get on the tee early. You know, I'd like to be off so we can have lunch go to Martin's ice cream, and then I drive back and be back here by five o'clock. That would be great. Um, we'll figure all that out later. Um, Marcus, I agree that they last for years. Yeah, my first drill was Black & Decker, and it's still, yeah, yeah. If you take care of them and you buy quality from the get-go, see the big difference a lot of people don't know. I, I just gave, for example, one of the live streams I did early on, really early on, if you go way back into the beginning of the live stream back in December, November. Um, so remember that uh, Stanley Black and Decker, um, they bought um, the, they bought the Craftsman brand from Sears. And so they, they and what has happened, unfortunately, this happens all through time. People don't realize this. So way back when, 20, 30, 40 years ago, Craftsman, that was, you bought a Craftsman power tool. It was a good power tool. All right. I I, uh, I went to the editors' conferences. I talked to the lab guys. They had very specific tests. If it didn't pass the test, Craftsman's name wouldn't go on it. Well, those days are over with. So I, Craftsman or Stanley Black and Decker sent to me a big box that had eight Craftsman power tools in it, all battery operated. Eight things. All right, it's you can go back to my live streams and find it. I showed them all. A circular saw, a drill, a drill dry, a driver, a sander, a jigsaw, uh, who knows what? I don't know, eight things. I, maybe even a tiny little belt sander, all for $190. <laughs> I gave them all to my daughter. <laughs> They're out in Long Beach now. <laughs> so if you tried to if you tried to use that circular saw and you were trying to cut two by twelves with it. I would say within 40 minutes, it would be over. It, you, you'll burn it up. You'll burn up the electric motor or you'll break a plastic gear. They got plastic gears and stuff inside of them. Whereas the Marcus's tool and the tools that I buy, they still got metal gears, good good metal, strong metal. So you're, you're going to have a really hard time breaking the tool. All right. So um, Jimmy says, do you know someone that sells electrical and plumbing overstock? No, I do not know anybody who sells that. Nope. Ah, <laughs> good nights here. Better late than never. Yes, true. Yes, it is good. Good that you're here. I'm just about ready to close up shop here. I'm not. I'm going to be hanging up here soon. Jimmy says Bosch will last forever. Take care of. Yes, it's a great tool. I've got. I've got. I've got some a lot of uh, good Bosch stuff. I love. I have a great Bosch uh, circular saw, corded circular saw. Uh, just got great, great stuff. Uh, but I've got a wonderful Bosch router. Same thing, my Bosch router. It's got to be 40 years old. Works like the day I bought it. It's perfect. <laughs> um, 
<laughs> Sanderson's. Dude, we did this that that you missed that was an hour ago. I mean, if you've been here all that time, this is not the um I, I described how to install it uh, back at the beginning of the live stream, like within the first 20 minutes. I gave you all the tips and tricks. This was not gonna be a uh live stream where I'm actually putting crown molding up. If it, if you felt that way, I apologize to you. But I gave you, if you go back and watch the live stream, I tell you exactly how to install it. I tell you exactly. So um uh, and I and I have a. You can get my ebook if you want. I, I, here's my ebook. I, I, well, I, let me give you the link to the ebook again. Uh, I didn't do the live stream to sell the ebook, but if you want to get the ebook, if you want to learn how to put ground molding up, that's where you go. That that's um, <clears throat> um, thoughts on new Dewalt. So Dewalt's still making a good power tool, you know. And in the switch, though, if you haven't if you haven't picked up on it. All of the tool manufacturers are going to battery powered. All right. So I I remember that I was still attending all the editors conferences when this first started to happen, like 10, 12, 15 years ago. 15 years ago is when it really started to kick in. And I made a prediction that what was happening is that these power tool companies, they were, they were not going to be tool companies. They were going to become battery companies <laughs> because they, the, the, they, the, the um, it's just like selling razor blades, <laughs> and they they're not stupid, all right. So they and they they would suck. They're going to suck you in to their platform, all right. So in other words, you're not going to own a bunch of Milwaukee tools and a bunch of Dewalt and a bunch of Bosch. You generally are going to go to one platform. You're like you'll just say, okay, I I'm going to go to Milwaukee, and so now Milwaukee has got you by the short hairs, and you're going to be buying lots of batteries from them and. The batteries, the profit margin on the batteries is, it, it must be 700%. <laughs> it's it's way up there, way, way, way up there. All right. So they're, that's that's where they're making money. Um, yeah, I've got, I've got the, I just tested out, good night, the, um, I've got it down in the garage, the, um, the DeWalt uh, 12 volt, the tw they're, they're like miniature uh, uh, rotor hammer power drills, SDS bits. I have so many flipping rotor hammers here. I'm actually going to be selling a bunch. Uh, I've got, <laughs> I review these tools and I mean, I, I got too many tools. All right. So I, uh, I, I'm I, this spring, once it really warms up, I, I'm going to be going through everything. I'm going to have a big sale one day and, and have, you know, advertise it on, on Craigslist and, Maybe fascist book, I don't know, but uh, I, I sell tools and they're basically brand new. I've, I've only used them one time to, to to drill one hole to to show in my column. All right. So anyway, um, yeah, I've got uh, I've got a twenty volt stuff, some twenty volt Dewalt. It's all yeah, exact, exactly, exactly. Good night. Two hundred dollars. That I'm telling you, it does not cost them two hundred. It cost them maybe ten dollars to make the batteries. All right. <laughs> So, um, the, the, they're, they love, they're, they're loving it. They're loving, they're loving everything. So if you like corded tools and you're going to, it's going to be really hard to get corded tools in the future. And my recommendation would be to you, if you're a younger person, cause I still, I have all my corded tools. I mean, I'm, I, I'm good. I, I'm, I, I hope I don't check out anytime really soon, but I'm just saying the corded tools I have are going to last me as long as I'm, I'm on this side of the grass. But if you're a younger person, if I were you, I would be buying corded tools, some corded tools. I would have a corded uh, a power saw. I would have corded uh, a router. I, I would have some corded tools. And um, you will never regret having these corded tools. I'm telling you right now. I mean, you know, but get good ones. You know, get a really powerful, because pretty soon you're not going to be able to get them. They're, you will not be able to find them. Um, yeah, profit margins. I know all about it. Um, I, uh, I've been self-employed for 47 years. Um, you know, the sad thing was, is back when I was building, I, I didn't have a business degree and I should have been charging more. I didn't, I didn't charge enough. I didn't ever go bankrupt or wasn't close, but I should have made more profit to grow the business faster. So uh, the big mistake I made, if I could go back in time, 
<clears throat> when I was in college, um, I I, sh I didn't take one business class for all for I had I was able to take like 40 hours worth of electives. And I should have taken all business classes for instead of this, whatever the silly stuff I took. I can't even remember, but I know it wasn't business classes. So should have taken business. All right. So um, anyway, corded tools. Get if get if you're a young guy, uh, you want to get some corded tools. You want to get a corded circular saw for sure. And um, I don't know about a drill, but definitely a corded router. Definitely a corded router. Um, absolutely. Um, yeah. Oh no, it did. Um, absolutely. I should probably write a book about a lot of my jobs. Um, <laughs> I am not going to write about Pegula Masters, though. Pegula Masters. <laughs> not going to write about Pegula Masters. <laughs> no. All right. Um, any last questions? This is going to be last call. So I am uh, happy. Well, <clears throat> I've got, I've had, um, I've had a lot of air nailers in my career. And the trouble with the air nailers, I, I've since become a pass load guy. So the trouble with the air is that uh, if you're working in cold weather, it, they can freeze up. Um, the compressors are always a pain in the ass. Even, ele even electric ones are noisy. Um, pass load. I, I, I just can't say enough good things about pass load. I mean, are you kidding me? You just pull the tool of the case, pop the battery in, pull the trigger and boom. Shoots thousands of nails, thousands of nails on one gas cartridge. I, I, I mean, I've had pass load for 35 years. They're fantastic. I can't say enough good things about pass load. So, um, I love, love, love Paslin. All right. I'm going to get out of here. Um, no more questions. I will I should be here tomorrow. Um, I want to thank you for being here today. And um, spring's here. Still got snow on the ground, though, here in central New Hampshire. A lot of snow. Um, but there's bare spots. It's coming. And I will be here tomorrow. And remember, if you haven't signed up for my newsletter to do it, a lot of really great information every Sunday in the newsletter. Um, and um, I think I, I think the Sandersons are unhappy that I didn't do a crown molding installation here. <laughs> but trust me, it's all, it, it, go back and watch the, there's a lot of great information I gave about the crown molding. All right. So anyway, um, all right, Jason, see you, buddy. Uh, good night. See you. Um, Good night to good night, Mr. Good night. Um, and then, um, Lorraine, if you're still here, Will, Marcus, Jimmy, I know I'm going to forget somebody. Uh, everybody goes off the screen. That's the trouble. Um, I know Vanessa wasn't here today. If she was, she didn't say check in. MJ, he might be gone. Um, Oak Grove, Oak Grove, or Oscar. Oscar was at the dentist. How could I forget Oscar? Oh, my gosh. So. Uh, a lot of fun. It's, I have to tell you real fast. Oh, hey, Steve. Uh, there's Steve. I, I don't recognize you at all. Uh, that's an, an, Jack. Jack's here. Okay, good. A lot of people lurking. I didn't know you were here. All right. You got to check in. It doesn't do any good if you don't check in. Um, anyway, I just wanted to say it's really fun to have this new family and uh, new friends. So I uh, talked about it in my uh, newsletter last Sunday. Um, yes, burgers. Kathy's gonna have turkey. I'm I'm a beef guy. All right, so having a uh, a beef burger. We don't. I don't eat that much red meat, so I I'm I'm gonna enjoy it tonight. I actually am also <clears throat> gonna have a little bit of shrimp. I, I'm a sucker for shrimp cocktail, so I'm gonna thaw out a few shrimp, make some cocktail sauce, and uh, have some shrimp tonight. <laughs> Jason's the only lurker allowed. Um, <laughs> all right, so. I'm really happy uh, that that I've made friends with you, and it's really uh, uh, it's a lot of fun doing the live streams from my perspective. You have to understand that it's a lot of fun. So no more lurking. You got to check in for now, and we got to make a new rule. Got to check in, uh, check in so I know who's here. All right, it's only fair, right? All right, okay, I'm out of here. Uh, I'm Tim Carter. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I know shrimp cocktail. I get, I love it. Love shrimp. 
I got to read. Oh, actually, um, I'll, I'll give you a little treat here. I'm going to give you a little treat. Um, gonna, this is a true story. This is the first time I had shrimp. I got to believe this story is, I have, I have a couple of really weird websites. And I know this story is on the website, so I just want to see if it comes up. Uh, oh, here we go. Absolutely. This is a great story I wrote about 12 years ago. Um, so, you know, I, I try to share with you things that I think you really like. Um, I think you're going to really like this story. I wrote this about 12, 14 years ago. And um, what I need to do is I need to upload into that story. Uh, I'm probably going to transfer that story over to my Ask the Builder blog, and I'll put a photo in. Uh, Aunt Margaret, she was my dad's older sister, flipping, drop, dead, gorgeous. Oh, gorgeous. Oh, my gosh. She could have, I mean, she could have won a beauty contest. I'm telling you, when she was younger, not a doubt. I mean, just for, whoo. Anyway, um, go read that story. Go read that story right there. It's a little gift from me to you. Um, and um, uh, I'll show, share more of this. So that that tells you about my first time having shrimp cocktail. I think you'll enjoy it. All right, you go, run, you go read that story. Um, I'm going to get out of here. And I will uh, be here tomorrow and uh, if everything goes well. And I'm going to sign up for Discord in the morning. So I'm going to uh, I'm going to be a Discorder, <laughs> a Discorder starting tomorrow. I'm, 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 I've, I've shot my wad for today. I, I'm a morning person. I'm tired. I'm, I'm taking the rest of the day off. All right. I've been at it for 12 hours. All right. So anyway, thanks very much. I hope you enjoyed that story. Really cool story about Aunt Margaret and her magic fingers. All right. Wait till you read the story. It's great. <laughs> I miss her a lot. She was a great, great aunt. She was a great aunt. So, um, okay. Tim Carter, Ask the Builder. Go read about shrimp and Aunt Margaret. I'll be here tomorrow. Thanks for being here.